Hi, and welcome. We are so thankful that you've chosen to, to listen in today on um, a very important issue, topic, condition even, that many of us before a particular football game, Monday night football game, were not aware of previously. So many of us watched the game between the Bills and the Bengals where um, their safety, I believe, Damar mm -hmm. Hamlin, he took a intense hit and went down immediately. And, and then things got very serious, very scary, very fast. Um, CPR was done. And, um, and I'm sure that many of us, I know I have followed kind of his, his steps in his treatments process since then. However, to see someone, someone so healthy, mm -hmm. so young, 24 years old, go down like that was terrifying. And, and so uh, I'm here with Travis Engel, who is the chair of pediatrics here at Centra. And, um, and honestly, Travis reached out because of um, now this issue and help me, uh, am I saying this right? C c commotio? So some people say commotio cordis, some commotio others cordis. say commotio cordis. We'll oh, talk okay. a little bit about the uh, pronunciation and kind of what it means in a minute. But. Yeah. So commotio cordis is something that I was not aware of mm -hmm. up until this point. I mean, I, I understand what cardiac arrest is. However, um, when I think about sports and, um, and just even preparation for like our kids getting ready for sports, mm -hmm. you know, there's so much that parents worry about anyway. Um, and, and this is like, oh my goodness, one more thing. Is there one more <laughs> thing? <laughs> but I think being aware and understanding and hearing the facts behind it mm -hmm. can better prepare really our minds for what this is and how this could impact us in sure. light of what is impacting um, this entire community in the, uh, the NFL right now. So tell us a little bit about um, this. Is it a condition? So it's it's a yeah, it's a medical condition. condition. Okay. Um, but, you know, I'm hesitant to say that. I think, you know, there may be a better descriptor for it. The bottom line is it's not something you're born with. There's, you don't, you aren't born with commotio cordis. Mm -hmm. um, it's something you experience if the right set of circumstances happens. Okay. So that's different from structural heart disease that yeah. you're born with or congenital heart disease or congenital electrical disturbances that you're born with. That actually a good medical history, um, when you get your pre uh, participation sports physical, sometimes can reveal those things. Commotio yeah. cordis is a set of events that comes together kind of spontaneously yeah. um, for otherwise healthy individuals. Wow. So, um, you know, one of the reasons I have a particular interest in this, and I think the larger pediatrics um, a group of physicians has an interest in this, is we do a lot of pre-participation sports physicals. Yes. And sudden cardiac death or risk for sudden cardiac death or cardiac events is a large part of that when we're talking about young athletes. Um, so a lot of our physical, a lot of our history and a lot of our exam revolves around kind of risk stratifying patients who don't need any further workup, patients who may need to be referred to a cardiologist, which we have some great pediatric cardiologists in town, mm -hmm. um, and kind of determining what route to keep these patients safe when they do play sports. So is, with regards to commotio cordis, so it's Latin, it means commotion of the heart, okay. jostling of the heart, movement of the heart, right? Okay. And this was first described, like, there's case reports that we think were probably commotio cordis all the way back to the 1700s, right? Wow, yes. So during combat, during sports, things like that, people taking a blow to the chest, having this brief moment where they're kind of stunned and then collapsing to the ground in mm -hmm. cardiac arrest. Um, I think to understand commotio cordis, you really have to think about how the heart beats. What, what allows the heart to pump blood through the, through the body? So the heart really relies on a really organized um, sequence of electrical events to happen so that the chambers are coordinated and can pump blood effectively. Mm -hmm. So in our heart, we have four chambers. The two on the top are the atria. The two on the bottom are the ventricles. Okay. The atria pump and push blood into the ventricles, and then the ventricles pump and push blood into the body. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Mm -hmm. And this electricity that goes through the heart has to start from the top and work its way to the bottom. So that sequence follows itself. Mm -hmm. If we get out of step or out of sequence and your atria and your ventricles are contracting at the same time, 
like movement of blood is not going to is not going to occur effectively. Yeah, it causes tension. Exactly, and you you stop having car- effective cardiac output. Yeah. So when we look at the electrical rhythm of the heart, the EKG, we mm-hmm. have these waves, P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R, S, T. And that's that sequence that the electricity flows through the heart. Okay. Now, that sequence can be disrupted by a few things, right? We've heard of people getting electrocuted before, right? If they're working yes. on high power, uh, high voltage lines, stuff like that. That can certainly disrupt the heart. What is less common and very infrequent, and this is probably why a lot of people haven't heard of commotio cordis, is a physical blow at the right time, in the right place, with sufficient energy to the front of the chest to cause cells in the heart to depolarize Mm -hmm. when they should be recharging or repolarizing. And that disrupts this electrical rhythm. It stuns the heart and puts you into um, an electrical rhythm called V-fib, right? Which is essentially cardiac arrest because no blood is moving through the body. Goodness. Okay, first, the human heart is amazing. Just hearing you talk about this is it's amazing to visualize it and to really understand that in a new way. So thank you for explaining that. Um, in, in this occurrence that happens when, you know, all of these variables come together, um, it, like in this instance, we all saw that they, they sprung to action immediately. And while it seemed like an eternity when it was all happening, um, there, the reports are that his recovery, like the doctors are, is just ecstatic mm-hmm. over the level of recovery he has experienced up to this point. And so what are crucial things that need to happen when something like this occurs? Okay, so that's an excellent question. And what I really want to emphasize is any sudden cardiac arrest, whether it's from coronary artery disease, right, which we mm-hmm. typically see in, in older individuals. It's not my wheelhouse. We don't see a lot of cardiac Uh, coronary artery disease and pediatrics, whether it's from structural heart disease or anything, any sudden cardiac arrest relies on early CPR. Okay. Right. So get out there for the person who does not have cardiac output, they need CPR, which is why I encourage everyone to educate yourselves on CPR. Take a community CPR class. The number one thing that affects outcomes is early access to CPR. The second most important thing in patients who have a rhythm that is shockable, like V-fib or V-tac, mm-hmm. right, is early defibrillation. Okay. Right? So getting that AED, that automated external defibrillator, on the patient and shocking them, if necessary, if called for. Yeah, to is, set is things critical. back in the right electrical motion. Exactly, right? Because okay. we have this confused electrical system in the heart that's not in sequence any longer. We've yeah. got the ventricles fighting with the atria, right? Mm-hmm. And what, if we can just get in there and reset everything with that with that shock, with that defibrillation, mm-hmm. and then allow the heart's intrinsic electrical rhythm to take back over again, a lot of these patients fare pretty well, all right? For every minute that goes by without defibrillation and a patient who needs it, mm-hmm. your chances of survival go down by an estimated 10%, mm. right? Yeah. So, and the chances of survival and out of hospital cardiac arrest while getting better now because of um, access to CPR and AEDs are still pretty small, Yeah. right? So um, we really encourage early CPR, access to AED, and then of course, as soon as we realize there's an emergency, calling 911, Yeah. right? Okay. So in these early sports physicals, mm-hmm. um, what what are you looking for, or is there anything to look for? Because this isn't something that you know we would instill <coughs> preventative measures against because of what happens to cause it. Mm-hmm. So what 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 do these early sports physicals um, show you or indicate? Yeah, so that's a great question, and what I really want to do is separate the two issues, right? Commotio cordis not ever going to be picked up on an early sports physical. Okay. Um, so that's important to put out there because I don't want parents to um, weigh their decision or, or have their decision informed about sports, participa- sports participation, excuse me, based on the fact that they're worried about commotio cordis, right? Yeah. That's a set of circumstances that comes together that is riskier in some sports mm-hmm. than others, but at the end of the day has nothing to do with what your pediatrician or the cardiologist does during the exam or the history when you get cleared for sports, yeah. right? Okay. Which I think is is pretty evident by the fact that the NFL, we're talking about multi-million dollar players. If you think yes. that they haven't tried to protect that investment by doing a thorough history and physical on these on these individuals, yeah. 
you're wrong, right? That these is such a had, good point. These people have had such an extensive workup. Yes, right? and if they can't find or see that there is some type of pre-indication of this, then mm. then we just need to understand that the that it is. I don't want to say rare, but you know, it's sporadic. It's it, random. It's it is rare. You would be correct rare. to say it's rare. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and it's kind of a a freak accident, right? I yeah. mean, it's just this yeah. wrong set of circumstances coming together to allow this to happen. So that issue of commotio cordis will put um, on one side, kind of in one bucket, right? Okay. Then we have a subset of patients who are at a little bit higher risk of sudden cardiac death or cardiac events while they play sports. Mm -hmm. And the way that we try to pick this up in the in the sports pre-participation physical is we start by asking questions. Number one, what's your family history like? Have you ever had an individual in your family, a close relative, who's died suddenly with unexplained circumstances? Yeah. Maybe died in their sleep. Have they died while... Um, doing strenuous activity. Sometimes we ask, did they, were they working on a roof and then suddenly fell without a reason? Things like this, you know, that, that are maybe suspicious for they had yeah. a cardiac event and then they, they died, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so number one, we talk about history. In some cases, families have a very well-articulated or well-known history, right? They're like, oh yeah, my uncle, he um, died in his sleep. There was a lot of concern that he had a lot of chest pain when he was doing strenuous activity, et cetera, you know? Yeah. All right. So we ask those questions. Then we ask the patient questions really about themselves. So if, say we've asked family history. Now we talk to the patient and say, what about you? When you're going up the stairs, do you ever have a tickle in your chest? Does your heart ever feel funny? Yeah. Um, when you're running around with your friends or if you are already playing sports, do you ever have chest pain? You get sh uh, short of breath. Do you have trouble keeping up with your peers, right? Yeah. Um, have you ever had to just stop and take a moment, you know? Um, so things like that. Then, based on that, right, we've already asked those questions. We do a good physical exam, too. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we do is we listen to the heart, of course, and we listen to see if the heart beat sounds normal and regular. And we also listen to see um, if there's any murmurs, right? Oh, okay. So what I will also say is murmurs are, are fairly common in children, believe it or not. Really? A lot of children, even um, healthy athletes, like healthy adolescents, mm -hmm. have what we call like a physiologic murmur, like a, just a flow murmur, right? Okay. So I want to tell parents, too, that not every murmur even really requires an echocardiogram. Sometimes mm -hmm. parents hear a murmur and they get very, very scared. Yes. And we have ways during our exam to tell if that murmur is pathologic, bad, or just kind of physiologic, which mm -hmm. is just kind of normal. It's how you are. Right. So we may listen to the heart. You may have your child change position a couple times, lay flat, sit up, squat, stand yes. up. It's kind of it kind of looks funny. Right. We're moving all over the place. <laughs> the doctor's getting sweaty. The patient's getting sweaty. We're doing <laughs> all the Exactly. It's a workout. Right. And um, based on what we hear when we do those position changes, mm -hmm. if the murmur gets louder, does it get softer? Does it go away? What's the position of the murmur? At that point. We can make a pretty um, informed decision about whether this murmur needs to be worked up further. And that's where we pull the trigger and we talk to our wonderful cardiologist friends and we say, hey, I've got this patient who has this history, mm -hmm. this um, report, these reported symptoms, and these physical findings on exam. I'd like to refer them to get an EKG potentially, right? Yeah. Or an echocardiogram. Okay. And those two look at really different things, right? The EKG looks at electrical activity. And the echocardiogram, echocardiogram looks primarily at structure. Um, so not every patient who needs an echo needs an EKG, and not every patient who gets an EKG needs an echo. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, all that being said, we talk with the cardiologist. The cardiologist makes a, um, you know, goes through their expertise and decides what this patient needs for further workup. And then yeah. we can kind of make an informed decision with the parent based on what we find about if sports participation is reasonable or not. Okay. So then in, in light of these recent events and the ongoing of, you know, sports physical exams, mm -hmm. like this is, this is a forever thing. Like your, your child will need this sports physical exam before they head into um, any type of sport environment. What would your message be to parents who are coming in? Uh, maybe they're a little shaken, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. at this point, or, or maybe they're not aware of this at all. Like, does this change your message? So... I'll talk about it as a parent first, and then I think as a physician. And this is how I approach a lot of patients. I would never make a recommendation or um, give guidance based on something I would feel like I would never feel was safe for my children. Right? Yes. So number one, I don't think this is going to change how we do sports in our family. 
right? Knowing what I know. Mm -hmm. uh, my son wrestles. My daughter does horseback riding. Oh, I love um, it. Both sports that are fairly high impact, right? Yes. Um, it's, that's not going to change this, um, episode with Damar Hamlin. I don't think it's going to change anything we do with that regard. Mm -hmm. Our kids also have an excellent pediatrician who's done a very thorough sports participation physical too. Okay. So I'm comforted knowing that. Right. Um, and I never treat my own children. So I always go in as a parent, not a doctor when we go yes, to our doctor's yes, appointment. That's, that's good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, um, with regards to what parents, how parents should feel going forward for this. Mm -hmm. uh, because of this, I would say, do not worry about commotion cortis in your child, right? Uh, overall, right? No more now than you would have before, yes, yes. right? Now that it's, now that we know about it, right? It yeah. doesn't necessarily mean it's more frequent. We just happen to know about it more. And also your risk for commotion cortis is, is based on what sports you're participating in mm -hmm. and the circumstances that surround that. I think sports overall are pretty safe, right? Yes. Um, in fact, sports participation from a, um, just physical activity and being good for children's social and emotional development are very important. Mm -hmm. All right. And also just not being afraid of things like this, I think is important for kids too. Yes. So having a good, this is a good chance to have a conversation with your kids also, because they're probably hearing a lot of stuff at school. Yeah. Um, maybe even hearing stuff from their coaches and things like that to talk with them and really go over the fact that, you know, this is scary. We saw mm -hmm. this talk about their feelings, label some of their emotions for them that they're, kind of feed into you yeah. and then talk about what scared them and then reassure them, right? That we've got a great doctor who's talked to you about what's going on. Who's also like done a good physical mm -hmm. um, and give them that reassurance too. So hopefully, cause some kids definitely will have some anxiety surrounding this. I imagine yes. appropriately. So I think some parents will too. Yeah. Um, like I said, we, we worry about our kids. Mm -hmm. We want what's best for them. We want them to be safe. And, um, and so I think that that's incredible advice to have those conversations um, and help them. I love what you said about help them label those feelings um, and, and even talk about um, how, how almost random mm -hmm. it can be, um, as well as the difference between the NFL and, you know, Little League football or mm -hmm. even high school football. Um, you know, hits can be hard, but um, I, that, that's such good advice to just have these conversations with your kids mm -hmm. and, um, and develop that sense of, um, not meeting everything with fear, fear that keeps you out of things that can be so yeah. great developmentally for you, like sports experiences. Absolutely. And I would also tell parents to, like, if I was back in the community setting, I'm a hospitalist now. So I see parents primarily in the hospital after something's happened. Yes. But if I was doing, um, primary care pediatrics again, mm -hmm. My main advice to parents would be like, you know, on the menu or the list of things to worry about with sports participation in your children, right? Commotio cordis is, is way distant on the back burner in my mind, yes. right? Things like um, orthopedic injuries, concussions, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Those are much more frequent and probably more worrisome, honestly, when, we, when yes. it comes to our kids participating in sports. And that's a conversation for another day. I hope, I, I think most teams right now are taking a lot of precautions to prevent that stuff, mm -hmm. but there's always going to be a risk in participating in sports. And I think we minimize that risk, allow our kids to participate in sports, have an active, fun lifestyle as they're growing up. Yes. And, um, um, you know, allow them to grow and develop in a world that when we participate in activities, sometimes is a little less safe, but we make it as safe as we can. And it's yeah. certainly not unreasonable. Right? Yes. Well, thank you so much for coming on and, and for reaching out because this is um, something that, you know, it's timely, it's happening in our community, um, large community, you know, but, mm -hmm. you know, it impacts us and it impacts our kids and these conversations can be crucial. So I appreciate you coming on to talk sure. about this. If I may, with just a closing thought here. Absolutely. Right? Number one, take a community CPR class, no CPR. Yes. Right? Number two, any place where children are playing sports, like organized sports activities, mm -hmm. should have an AED available and someone should know how to use it. Yes. Right? And number three, know where you're at and be able to call 911 if you need assistance. Right? Yeah. These are the things that are going to help our children if they experience sudden cardiac arrest while playing sports. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, and thank you all for joining in and listening today. And um, and like Dr. Engel said, you can look up online for where there are CPR classes here within our area. I know Centra tends to offer that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we also do have a podcast on concussion. As we're going into sports participation physical, we're heading into the spring season of sports for our kids. Um, 
go ahead and check that out and just be aware of the things that are impacting them and how we can keep them healthy and safe. And so thank you for joining us and have a great day.